In this video I'm gonna show you why you'd like to use a Global Protect internal gateway and how you can configure it on your Palo Alto firewall. Internal Global Protect Gateway. This is a topic that some of you have been asking in the comments. Whenever you configure a basic Global Protect, you use external gateways to connect your users to your corporate network. But besides providing the connectivity, the Global Protect external gateway also provides a very important information, is the mapping from the username to an IP address. Inside your company, if you don't have a client connected to Global Protect, you also have other resources to get the information from the user IP mapping, like a user ID agent, for example. But you also have the option to use Global Protect to provide you with this, this information, also for the users inside your network. So in this case, you would be using an internal gateway to connect your Global Protect clients to your file to provide this user IP mapping information. And furthermore, besides the user IP mapping, the internal Global Protect can also provide you some HIP information. Which brings me to the second reason why you would like to implement the internal gateway, to gather this HIP information from your clients. The main difference between external and internal gateways is that you can implement a tunnel also for the internal gateway, but you don't have to. You can have the internal gateway only providing you with user IP information, user IP mapping, and also the HIP information, but that's it, no tunnel through the file. So enough talk, let's head to Panorama to start setting up our configuration. So this is my Panorama. I already have a basic Global Protect setup with a portal and external gateway. Let me show you. Portal and the gateway and also a couple certificates. So if you need help setting up Global Protect from scratch, Take a look at this video first. I'll leave a link of the video in the description. For this example, I'll be using SAML with Okta for the client authentication. After the first login on Global Protect, Okta will leave a cookie and the user won't have to enter its credentials every time he or she logs in. So I can show you a little bit what I configured in Okta. Here under security networks, I set up my inside corporate network and the gateway, it's the, let me just open this. And here in my gateway IPs, I entered my current public IP address that's been used to access Okta. And this is gonna be mapping to my inside corporate network. And then we have global session policy. And I'm using these networks under global se session policy. I created two policies here. One will be for internal rule and an external rule. I'm gonna show you, they are a little bit different. For the internal ones, I have selected, sorry, I haven't selected. And now I'm allowing any factor used to meet authentication policies. MFA, I said it's not required. I could have set required for the test. I would just leave it like this. And here in the bottom, important part, I set the limit for the session lifetime. I set it to 15 days and the maximum Okta global session timeout idle time I set to one day. So after the weekend, the user would have to enter its credentials again. And here, very important, I set this part to enable, even though disable is recommended by Okta. It means that whenever I close the browser or the user closes the browser, the cookie doesn't get lost. It doesn't uh, erase the cookie. If you set to disable, so every time that you connect with Global Protect, Global Protect closes the embedded browser. So it means for Okta that the session gets lost. And here for the external rule, I don't really want the cookie to be lasting so long. So every time the browser gets closed, the user has to enter its credentials again. And this would be for user IP connecting from anywhere. But here, it would come after the internal rule. So if a user is inside the network internal rule, this one would match. So under directory people, I have a user called Charlie Blake, and it's gonna log in using the user principal name charlie at ad.netsums.com. And under applications, I added a new application. This is the Palo Alto Global Protect. Under assignment, I have assigned the Charlie Blake. Does he have something here? My base URL will be the vpn.sums.com. 
I think here there's nothing else interesting. And on the under sign on, you can just open this. I'm just showing you quickly how you can configure this. It's not a topic from this video, but I can show you quickly. And if you paste in a new browser, you can just come here and say save and share. And you can save this page. It's going to save as an XML and you can import this XML on your file. Just quick, if you'd like a cheat sheet from the CLI command from the Palo Alto file or a VPN connection sheet for site-to-site -site connections, head to netsums.com slash resources. Now back to the video. So the idea from today actually is to, is to configure an internal gateway and the one responsible for deciding if it's connecting to the internal or external gateways, it's actually the client itself. So for that, the client uses DNS to verify if it's inside or outside of its corporate network. So if you go to, I'm going to show you how you can do it. If you go to network, global protect, where is it here? Portal. And this is already a portal that I have already configured. But if you go to agent, and if you open this agent, you're going to see that under internal, we still have no configuration. And here's where we configure this internal host detection. So we're going to click on this internal host detection. I'm going to enter the IP address from my server. And here, the host name of the server. So what it means with this configuration is that the client is going to make a reverse DNS lookup. So it's taking this IP address and trying to resolve this name. It has to work. If it works, so the client is going to assume that it's in the internal network and it's going to try to connect to the internal gateway. Let me add my internal gateway. So VPN minus internal at .netsums.com. This is the FQDN. And here under source address, you don't need to enter anything if you want to allow all the IP addresses. Otherwise, if you want to restrict to some IP addresses, you can enter here something. Click on OK and click on OK. So now I'm going to try to resolve this IP address, 10.0.1.17. And you can see that I get back the name ubuntu one netsumscom So it's resolving. And here under app, well, I'll show you before the external gateway. It's the one VPN netsums.com that I already have configured. And under app, we have the connect, connect method, the default one, user logon, always on. This is an important part. Internal gateway only works with always on. So you would have to choose one of these two. The difference between them is the user logon only connects after the user logs on. And the pre on connects before the user logs on. It means when the computer boots, the pre on already tries to connect to the gateway, to the portal first and then the gateway. We're going to choose for this lab the user logon. Otherwise, I haven't changed anything. Use single sign-on and left yes. And we're going to be using the embedded browser from Global Protect. So we can press OK. And that's my portal configuration. So now we're going to add the internal gateway. Just as with the external gateway, the FQDN needs to match the one in the gateway certificate. And for that, we're going to go to gateways. Click on add. And we're going to call this GW underscore VPN internal dot net sums dot com. The interface is going to be my VLAN 172. This is my inside interface. And it has the IP address 172.16.0.1. And if I try to resolve VPN internal netsums.com, I get this IP address in my network. OK, if we go to authentication, I'm going to choose here my already prepared service profile. This is the top one. I'm going to add my client authentication. It's going to be gateway SAML. Authentication profile I also have already prepared. 
and here on the bottom I'm gonna choose yes because I don't want to use to require any certificate so just click on OK and actually that's the only thing we need to do usually we make an agent configuration for a for an external gateway but in the case of the internal gateway we don't really need this we can this is a possibility that we can say okay I want a tunnel mode this would mean that we're gonna make a configuration in the internal gateway similar to the one for the external gateway this is also possible and there's actually one difference with the internal gateway we are able to we there's a possibility to do say let me just choose a tunnel interface here just this one just so I can show you we can go here and say I don't want any IPsec so the global protect creates a tunnel to the file but it doesn't encrypt the communication we don't really want that so it means the communication from the client to the file is going to be ex explicit to pass on the user IP mappings and the heap information for everything else the client from the traffic from the client is going to come with the source IP address from the client without any tunnel to the file I can show you still the the SAML configuration I think I haven't showed you yet this is the one that we created I imported a I went through here import and I imported the metadata and this is the information that the, this metadata file gave me and I, I unchecked this validate identity provider certificate that's all actually okay let me commit and let's test the configuration so now my client I'm gonna open Google Chrome and I'm gonna download the Global Protect app so we're gonna go to HTTPS vpn.netsums.com so it's asking me to log into the portal so I need to log in with Charlie so I'm gonna download now the Windows 64 bit installed global protect next 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 I'm not local administrator close okay has been installed it's here now we click on get started and enter the portal vpn.netsums.com connect So I didn't have the keep me signed in checked. I'm gonna click on next on purpose. Push notification. Yes, it's me. I'll click here so you can take a look. So in my test now we got connected but it's showing here on the global protect needed to change the connection type I have not if you take a look here you can see it is called it's connected to vpn.sums.com this is the external gateway not the internal gateway and so the IPsec is not being allowed but the wrong thing is that it's connecting to the external gateway and I'm gonna show you why so here on panorama I made a mistake the server doesn't have the ad netsums.com is only ubuntu one dot netsums.com it was my mistake so the client tried to verify if this host name could be resolved well the IP address could be resolved to this host name and it was not true now this one is the correct one good that it happened and then we can check what 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 the the client actually does and I also found here another typo it's missing the S in that sums. There you go. I'll press OK. OK. And now let's commit our configuration and try again the test. So now on the client, we're going to disconnect this guy. 
and we're going to start everything from scratch. So if I go to C users, I'm logged in with a Charlie app data local. Here there is a folder called Palo Alto Networks. Yeah, I thought I would not be able to. If I go to Task Manager and look for Global Protect Client, I can end this task. And now I'm going to be able to erase this guy. There you go. And we're going to go to Internet Options. I'm going to erase any cookies that Okta left there. So delete, apply, OK. And let's restart the Global Protect. Global Protect. Not connected, VPN at sums.com, click on connect. Okay, Okta now, charlie at adnetsums.com. I'm gonna click now and keep me signed in. Next, push notification. Yes, it's me. So now we can take a look. You are on the internet, internal corporate network, it's connected. Let's take a look at the file now, what we can see there. So I've set up a filter here that I'm filtering everything from my client, Windows client, to my internal gateway, which is the first one, and the external gateway is the second IP address. So the connections to my external gateway, they are from here to here. I made some tests before, actually it should be this one only. I, I, I can take a look at the time. And after it connect, it's connect, connected to the external gateway, to the portal in this case, and then the connection to the internal gateway is this one. The stuff here that's been blocked is the IPsec stuff before that I showed you. I'm not allowing port UDP for 4501 to my external gateway from inside my network. So that's why it's being blocked and it shows this little window that switch back to or switch to SSL. Let's take a look now at Global Protect. So here in the group, Global Protect, we can see two main things. One, it's recognizing my charlie at ad.netsums.com correctly. And the other one is that it's seeing the same public IP before as this private IP before. So the, let me just move this here. The private IPv4 and the public IPv4, is the, they are the same. So it means that there, there are no tunnels being built to the file as we configured it. So it's working as designed. Now one more thing. We're going to go back to the client now. Since I checked the keep me, keep me signed in, if I restart the computer, it should not show me the login anymore. Since I activated in Nocta, that even with a new browser session, the, the, the first cookie should be, should be used for the, config, for the, for the connection. So let's, let's go back to the client and I'm going to restart the client here, restart and it should connect without the user having to do anything. Let's take a look. So now I'm logging into my Windows client. Then now we can see Global Protect is trying to connect. There you go. It connected automatically without the user having to do anything. But you as a user, you would see this little window on the right side. And if you're in the internal network, this is what would happen. I think for me personally, it's a good compromise between usability and security. But like I said, there is no one size fits all solution. You need to find the correct balance between security and usability in your environment. Thank you guys for watching the video until the end. If you got some value from it, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment if you have some questions, and maybe this video here can help you further with the Palo Alto configuration, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.